Hey, hey, all you mentees, Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me today for my overview of the Exile hardcover from Living the Line Publishing. So let's go ahead and get started. How's it going, all you mentees? Welcome back. And before I go any further... I want to give a huge thank you to Carson and all the folks at Living the Line for sending us a copy of this book. I remember when I was doing the upcoming collected editions for the month of February, this one stood out to me. I love the color pattern that was used on the cover, and I had no idea it was Living the Line that was publishing it, and I had no idea they were going to send me a copy of it. So a big thank you to you guys. Uh, so yes, we are looking at Eric Creek's The Exile, and this right here was a book I could not put down. It was in my pile of books to read, right underneath some uh, Dark Horse, and I had a couple Marvel books and DC books, and I'm like, oh, finally I get to this, and I finally got to it at the end of March, but here's my video finally. Exile, Eric Creek, and Living the Line logo down there. So you see this brown pattern, kind of reminds me of those uh, school textbooks or school books, and then the back of the book right here. You don't see an ISBN, uh, but the price of this is $40. That's the retail price. And it's art on board. And as a matter of fact, not sure if you noticed or not, but the cape goes along the cover to the back cover. So the art on board. And so does that C. Telling you a little bit about what you're gonna be finding in here and what the exile is. And like I said, no dust jacket, art on board, and it does the, the hardcover does have a glossy finish to it. So, we're going to crack this book open here in a second. But before I do, I wanted to do a little size comparison. Because this is a little different than your standard hardcovers. So, really quick, here it is next to a trade paperback. So, this is the trim size, of course, of those single issues. And right next to an omnibus, which it looks to be... Well, it's definitely longer see right there creeping through uh, but it looks to be about the same height as an omnibus or what would one consider a deluxe edition so looks about the height of that so it'll fit nicely in your Kalax or wherever you have your omnis and deluxe editions but it's a tad bit longer i guess it doesn't matter right if you're putting it inside of a bookcase but we're gonna crack this open talk about the premise of the story and show off this amazing artwork by Eric Creek. All right, so we're gonna crack this book open. Here's this beautiful end sheets. And I say beautiful as you see a pile of skulls lined up. So you can see that this is right after a huge battle. Man, this book is ruthless. Um, and I'm not sure, I'm sorry, I don't know if all of them will come with this little signature card right there. This is really unique for a book, and somebody told me in my haul video whenever I did this, because I hadn't read it by the time I did, I filmed my haul video, that the way that this is done, the way they do the extras towards the front, it's the same way that a lot of European books are done. So this is Eric's journey to Iceland in 2017, and he's starting to take notes. There's sketches here, and my gosh, his artwork. As soon as I saw this, it just reminded me of those classic EC artists. That's what I, I was hooked as soon as I opened this book up. And you have some more characters there designing the cover or the look for the cover of the book. And then one of the most important pages that might overwhelm people, but rest assured by the end of this book, all these faces are going to be familiar. Because when I first opened this, I thought the exact same thing. I was like, oh my gosh, is this how many characters I have to memorize? But not only that... Their names are like Uko or Jarki or Hostein. And I'm sure I'm butchering all these Icelandic names and I'm so sorry. Uh, but I, I got Siggy. I had Siggy down. But then by the end of the book, I was like, oh man, I really like Thorsten. And I wanted more of Thorsten's character in here. And that's this guy right here. Or Hostein. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's just something you get overwhelmed with when you're introduced to a book. But I'm glad that it's here because I, I did keep, uh, keep going back to here because some of the clothing is very similar. Sometimes the beards look a little similar to each other. Even the facial features or facial expressions look similar to from one character to another. So I kept going back to this from time to time. 
Maybe that's why I had it memorized. There's a forward here that is very important. This is by the author or creator of this book, Eric Creek, and it was written in Amsterdam in October 2018, talking about this book and how important it is to emphasize that this is a work of fiction. A couple of characters were inspired by real people, but everything else, all the families, the land, and everything else is a work of fiction. So when I read that, I thought, all right, where's this going? Because anytime I see that, I think, okay, this is going to be a historical fiction book. There might be some magic in here. There might be dragons or, or demons. Yeah, no, none of that. But I love this book. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Uh, Cursed are we, brother, for I am your killer. It shall never be forgotten. Harsh is the verdict of the Norns. This is from the saga of Hedrick and Hervor, 13th century AD. The author is unknown. So what is this book about if it's not about magic and demons and things like that? Well, it's all about the return of Halstein Thordson. He comes back home from a big war after seven years of being in exile, hence the name Exile. He returns with a couple of friends. Uh, he is reunited with his stepmother, Salvig, and his half-brother, Otar, and finds out that his father, whom he left behind seven years ago, has passed away. And now the land is up you know, for grabs, and the stepmother, Solvig, is having a hard time with a neighboring family wanting her married to their son. And it's somebody from Halstein's past. So one thing you're going to notice, of course, the color tones, they are blue for the most part. However, when there is death or whenever there's violence or sometimes flashbacks, there's red tones added. And oh my gosh, that is just absolutely breathtaking. So first we meet the characters of Solvig and Otar, and there's Siggy, and this guy right here. This is Anar, who again wants the widow's hand so he can claim this land. Now Anar is part of the reason why Halstein has been exiled from this land, and you can find out exactly a little more about that later on. There's somebody that is cutting down trees illegally in her land, and she's trying to figure out who that is, and meanwhile... The three ex-soldiers land back in Iceland after being in a huge fight. And man, I just think this is such an awesome story. Uh, while in, you know, it's it all takes place in Iceland, but it feels like a freaking Western. That's the way it's written. And maybe it's because of that. They borrow heavily from Icelandic lore. Man, it just it took me back how good this was there. I'm sure some people are going to be bored with this because there's, you know, there's action. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of talking, though. It's a lot about settling lands and settling debts and honor and, you know, learning who to trust and who not to trust, who really is family. And will Halstein manage to get peace now that he's back because he was exiled for a reason, for a wrongful act that he committed, even though he has paid for it? And what's to become of his land? What's to become of his stepmother and stepbrother? Yeah, this is there's some rough scenes in here. And yes, this does have some mature content, mainly due to the violence and some nudity and a couple of uh, sexual content in here. So, as it, again, I go back to looking at Creek's artwork and just channeling those EC artists that I love so much, like uh, Johnny Craig, for example. It kind of reminds me a lot of that. And you throw in these blue tones that just add to the mood and the feel of the story. How cold some of these scenes are. Not physically, like metaphorically cold. Like the characters acting around each other. And there are a lot of characters. And it's interesting to see, you know, the, the beliefs of some of the characters. Whether they're polytheistic or whether they're starting to turn towards Christianity. That was a really interesting approach to the book. Um, again, historical fiction taking a lot of liberties, but it really feels like some of these stories just happened. Like, it feels like this was a real family battling for their land and trying to make amends with the past. And that's what really this is about, you know, Halstein reconnecting with his family. Even though it's his stepbrother, he sees him as blood because that is the son of his father that has passed. His father leaving him the sword and him training his brother on how to arm yourself with a sword. And 
the stepmother not having any of it. You know, she screams at Otar for training with Halstein. I think it's it's great. It's down to earth. It feels realistic, even though these stories happened years ago. There's another big character in here I haven't really talked about, and that is Vigdis. This is the sister of Anar, and her and Halstein had a past together. So she does find out that he's back in this land, and it's like, do they rekindle their love? What exactly happened? How did they end things before he left to go to war when he was exiled? Man, this this is such a good and powerful story. I will just leave it at that. And this beautiful artwork is from beginning to finish. And by the end of it, you will want more. Let me see if I can find some action. Because yes, there is action. But it's just done in a way that I, I think it just fits the tone of the story. It's not overly done. Like I mentioned, these red tones right here, it's done whenever there's violence or death or something in the past. So it's like a flashback. So there is action like this, but it never overtakes the story. The story is great on its own. And man, it's just a, such a feat. There are a couple of things in here that I had to actually find out what they were, like the all thing. So a couple of things that you'll be looking up. But in the end, I didn't know that you could just go to the back. So we're done talking about the story and looking at the art, by the way. Let's look at the back matter. Because there's a glossary in the back. I thought everything, all the extras were in the front. Called the sketches. But there's a couple of things in the back, such as the glossary, which could have been useful. Uh, but I'm glad it's back here. So words like the all thing is in here, which I had to look up what it was. Apparently it was passed in 930 AD by the Icelandic parliament. And it's pretty much laws were made where marriages were broken and conflicts were settled there. So it's pretty much where you take your conflicts. And that's what they kept talking about, this all thing that was supposed to take place to see if Halstein is cleared of the sins of his past. If the seven years of exile is really all he had to pay for everything that he has brought upon this land. And different just words in here that you'll come to learn. Some of them you're probably familiar with if you've read comics or I guess a historian. Comics, of course, like Thor would help. And then a little bit about the author. So this is definitely somebody I want to follow. I want to check out his other books. Uh, so mostly about Vikings, but there's a couple of other books in here. And then the printing and the end paper. And speaking of paper, this book is printed in this thick matte paper, which really absorbs those beautiful tones of blue and red showcasing that landscape. Let's look at that binding because it is sewn binding and 192 pages. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsors. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this hardcover. Let me know in the comments down below if stories like this interest you or if you enjoy more of those historical fiction type of stories. Well, I guess historical science fiction or fantasy type of stories with dragons and magic and aliens or demons. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Uh, but sometimes, you know, th stuff like this really hits for me. And yeah, don't be surprised if you see this by the end of the year is all I'm going to say when I choose my favorite reads of 2023. This was amazing. And selfishly, I kind of want to read more about the characters in here. This was the Uncanny Omar. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave your questions down below. Smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.